Hey, everybody. Welcome to A Late Show. I'm just cleaning my glasses. Give me a second here. I'm, uh, I'm sorry to keep you guys waiting. It's just that this is the last show of the week. Rare Friday show. Rare, Rare Friday show at this point. We had a live show a couple of nights ago. I'm still riding out that high. And uh, I, uh, I don't know if my glasses are dirty or just my corneas refuse to focus anymore. But I'm having a little trouble. There you go. There are the words right there. I can't wait to find out what I want to say tonight because a little squirrel cage and these little, little hosing out up there. <laughs> Happy Friday. It's the end of the first week of a brand new year, which means it's time for my new segment, 2021, the week that felt like a year, a look back. Where to begin? Monday. What happened on Monday? I can't remember. But on Tuesday, there was this big runoff election uh, down in Georgia. I know that because on Wednesday, I was going to have all this fun talking about winners headed to the Senate, but I had to scrap all that when these losers headed to the Senate. It was amazing. Tuesday, I mean, not the Wednesday thing. That was, when was it? What day is this? This is Friday. Wednesday was the bad day. Tuesday was the fun night that we found out on Wednesday, but I couldn't talk about it. There you go. So Tuesday was amazing. I spent the whole evening breathlessly watching John King and Steve Kornacki with their touchscreens after dark. 50,000 votes difference, right? 40,000 votes difference. 130,000, Nick says. Uh, Mr. Sterling was saying 171,000 votes. You're sitting on 170, 180,000 or so votes to be reported out, where I think you can certainly expect Democrats to be getting at least 80% of those votes and probably more. Got it. I'm crunching the latest numbers out of Georgia as they continue to trickle in. We're watching particularly military ballots right now. I'm going to pull up uh, the results on Chatham County. And, and okay, I'm getting nothing there. And, and I guess the results are all in from Chatham County. Let's, uh, let's go, let's look at this area. Let's, do, it, do we not, is it, is it here? Is it, do I, where do I, is it, is it Cobb? Cobb or is it Cobb-a-ba? Is this voice activated, Jim? Cobb-a-ba! Cobb-a-ba! Decab! Decab! Nothing, okay. Can we put up a weather map or anything, Jim? Okay, and I'm being told that this touch screen is broken? It does not work. It never worked. It's not a touchscreen, and I'm being told I've been told that before. Okay, help me out, guys. Is there math to be had here? There's math to be had here. You can do the math here. 54 and 29, 83, 84. Okay, 54 and 29, 83 and 84 with a Powerball of six times 170,000. Keep feeding me, boys. Keep feeding me. You're a little over 85,000 is your turnout in the uh, November general election. You know, 60, you're a bit north of 68,000 here. So now you're at 1.8, 1.7, 3.5. Add up. You're a little higher than that. Okay, got it. Adding things makes them higher. That checks out. Okay, 1.8, adding 29, 40,000 plus or minus, divided by the square root of ish. And the results are... F*** you, Mitch McConnell. You lost. I'm going to sit down. I think I huffed too many integers. The first race that they called on Tuesday night was... Senator-elect Raphael Warnock, seen here out cuting a puppy, who defeated appointed senator and lady who has to go to the horse barber, <laughs> Kelly Loeffler. With his victory, Warnock becomes the first black senator in Georgia history. Wow. Really? Is that true? Yeah. But Georgia has the third highest black population of America. And until now, it had never been represented by a black senator? That's, that's like California never having a Latino senator. What's that? They just got one this year, too? And he was appointed? Okay, well, I mean, that's like New Mexico never having a Native American senator. What? Wow, Stacey Abrams, hope you're ready to rack up some frequent flyer miles. But just because Warnock's headed to the U.S. Senate doesn't mean he's given up his church work. I intend to return to my pulpit and preach on Sunday mornings uh, and to talk to the people. Maybe the kind reverend can hire this soon-to-be unemployed person as his Bible holder. On election night, Leffler refused to concede. We're gonna win this election. We're gonna save this country. We got some work to do here. This is a game of inches. 
Oh, okay, okay, I see what you did wrong there. It's actually a game of votes, and he got more. Now, it took until Wednesday, but eventually the other race was called for investigative journalist and boy demanding that bedtime be pushed to 9.15, John Ossoff, who defeated incumbent senator and man showing just how big of a tool he is, David Perdue. The big news is, with these victories, the Democrats will now control the Senate. It's been so long, they're going to have to flip through the owner's manual. Hey, hey, look at this. Did you know we're allowed to hold votes? Ooh, heated power seats. It also means that Senator Chuck Schumer will replace Senator Mitch McConnell as majority leader. I ought to wipe the smile off McConnell's face. <laughs> can, we, can we check, Jim? The Senate will actually be split 50-50, with Vice President-elect Kamala Harris holding the tiebreaker that determines control. So essentially, Harris is still going to be a senator. Pretty on-brand for America to elect their first woman vice president and make her do her old job, too. Only pay her for one of them. All of this Republican failure falls to the feet of the president. The Georgia GOP needed him to rally his base, but instead, he demonized the state's Republican leaders and peddled baseless claims that Georgia's electoral system was rigged. Not exactly a winning strategy. It reminds me of this stirring pregame speech from Coach Taylor. Rigged game, you suck, let's lose. Even one of the president's own advisors said, the president the party. He the party. So the bad news for the GOP is you got screwed. The good news? You get a check for $130,000. One more slam for the road. This comes after the president already lost in Georgia in November, then lost a recount, then lost a recount of the recount, then Tuesday lost two runoffs. This guy has lost Georgia five times. And what is he asked to show for it? You get nothing. You lose. Good day, sir. Thank you for that analysis, Willie. Speaking of the president losing, the president lost, which means Biden's inauguration is going to happen on January 20th, whether the president likes it or not. For the record, not. Thanks to the pandemic, they're making some adjustments to Biden's swearing-in ceremony. For instance, they've eliminated the traditional inaugural parade. So, to all you die-hard inaug heads out there, I'm sorry, you'll just have to go stand in the cold and wave at traffic on your own time. Canceling the parade is just part of what the inaugural committee says will be a significantly scaled-down ceremony that will feature stringent health and safety protocols. Of course, the current president was way ahead of the curve on having a socially distanced inauguration. Speaking of stains on the country that will linger long past this president, we are still in the middle of an unprecedented pandemic. And it's changed the way we do almost everything, including watching movies. We're catching even the biggest new blockbusters at home on the couch. And last month, Warner Brothers announced that all its 2021 films will arrive in theaters and streaming on HBO Max simultaneously, including The Matrix 4. That's so exciting. I can't wait to escape to a, a fantasy world where all human contact is virtual and we're kept immobile while consuming high calorie sludge. Everyone's wondering when we're gonna go to the movies and when it's gonna feel normal again. And when that day finally comes, I'm proud to say The Late Show has a preview of the most anticipated film of the year. Our world was abandoned. The people divided, alone and afraid. Desperate for a way to come together. Desperate for a movie. Really, any movie in a theater would be great. A romantic comedy, a spy thriller, or another Marvel thing. I would even sit through one of those movies where a dog teaches a family the true meaning of Jesus, or whatever. Together, we will see the light. We will hear the sound. And together, we will have to sit through 20 minutes of ads before they even start the previews. Finnegan's Fish Loaf, a mutiny of flavor in every bite.
there's 400 new hours of Star Wars coming? Maybe I'm good. This film is not yet rated as the future remains a dark enigma. <laughs> We've got a great show for you tonight. I'm unveiling a new interview segment called The Colbert Questionnaire, where I ask the same set of questions to superstars Meryl Streep, George Clooney, and Tom Hanks. Which one's first? You gotta stick around to find out. It's Hanks. <laughs>